Chris! Chris, wake up! Wake up, I think I got a signal. Star Wars 2. Do you hear that? Oh, what? What? Is that Mike? Mike! Together? Chris, it's Chris and I. Can you hear us? Mike. Mike, you sound like shit. Oh, that sounds terrible. But we're in this, like, faux prison, I think. Again? I mean, I'm looking around and I see, like, a lot of paper mache masks, and they all look like phobes. Fortunately, I, I found, like, there's this crack in the wall over here, and it seems to be, uh, seems to be rum and coke flowing from this little crack in the wall, so... <laughs> That's the only good thing about phobe prison. Yeah, they have a the great, great bar, I guess. Yeah. This one here has, has vodka lemonades. It's great. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. I usually hang out here for a few <laughs> minutes, and then, uh... Maybe somebody will come and rescue us or something? I'm sure by the end of the episode. Well, okay, so then should we... I don't think they can hear us, so should we just do, like, our own thing? We can't, we can't guarantee that Mike and Paul are going to follow through on things, so we should probably handle the episode ourselves. Alright, well, that's fine. Um, I mean, I... I watched Phobe. You watched Phobe. <laughs> should we do some quick takes? Oh, that sounds terrible. Oh, God. That, that sounds terrible. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I hear every time. You, but. Why don't you do the first quick take? Because I'm going to have to mull it over. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, honestly, I'm going to say it, it looked pretty good, all things considering. I mean... Huh? Considering what? Considering the budget was like the $250 budget. It looked <laughs> I saw every penny of that $250 on screen. They had a law rocket with some pretty silly effects. They, there were some computer generated things going on. There was a paper mache mask. My I guess my quick take is that like there's I read a lot about this before looking at it and Oh, man. I mean, it is clearly low budget, oh. but you can tell they had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And there's a lot of positivity behind it. And they didn't expect this thing to become a cult classic. I mean, they just made it, oh, yeah. you know, just to, to have something to do and to fill time on a public access station. So, I mean, you know, so uh, it was fun. I, d I just really wish they hadn't spent so much time pointing the camera at feet. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I'm really glad that they got Jerry Sags from the Nasty Boys tag team in the 80s. <laughs> I, I was going to say that. He's, that he stole Bret Hart's sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone who's ever seen that movie and knows old school wrestling has to think that that's Jerry Sags. <laughs> oh, my God. I kept expecting it. When, did he, when does he have to go back to the WWF? He's got a match. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, what else did you like in this thing? Well, yeah, <laughs> I can't, I, I honestly, I kept having to tell myself that these are just some friends making a movie. They got a lot of people to chip in. It was definitely like, you could tell like the whole town chipped in because the credits, there were a lot of plugs at the end and you know, oh, yeah. they had, they got equipment <laughs> from so many different people and they were having fun with it. And that comes across a little bit on, <laughs> in the film, but <laughs> oh my god, what a slog. Yeah, it was it was kind of a slog. Um, I, I will say, you mentioned the rocket launcher. I actually really liked the rocket launcher prop. And I think <laughs> yeah, if you had pretty, that, that prop... Nice. Okay, there's one shot where you can see all the way through it. And you can see it's a, like a PVC pipe <laughs> or something. Yeah. So, you know, that's not great. But, like, if you were to use that prop with today's visual effects to, like, make the rocket and stuff, it would look oh, yeah. pretty awesome. So, like, yeah. the prop was built pretty good. So that that was I, I I did enjoy seeing the use of this alien bounty hunter using a um, I guess terrestrial law rocket. You did mention that it's a little bit of a slog, and I noticed there are several scenes that feel like they're just there to take up time. Yeah, they padded the the shit out of this with people walking and walking. Yeah, and, and walking. what was what was the main guy's name? Greg Dapp or something. Sergeant Dap. Greg Dapp. Sergeant Dapp. You know, <laughs> when, when he saves the, the heroine and offers to walk her home, I don't actually need to see them walk her home. <laughs> all mean, 15 miles. All 15 miles. <laughs> the other one with uh, was Tim and Jerry walking around. When they, <laughs> oh, when, God. When, uh, is it the, it's the phobe that lands, right? 
and then they think I, something's I, happening. I think so. Yeah, and yeah. they go out in the yeah, woods, and, and I swear they prob they they look around oh for god. what they <laughs> thought they heard for fifteen minutes. Oh my god! It's got With, to be. Oh, no less than fifteen minutes. It feels like yeah. thirty, but it's it's got it's a long ass time, and the mullets, oh fantastic! Oh, fantastic! I wanted to know when this was made, but yeah, the middle middle nineties, I guess. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, Prime... Well, I guess the mullet was kind of on its way out, but this was Canada. No offense to our Canadian friends up north. I don't know what Paul and Mike were talking about, you know, or the, what they're going to cover in the episode, but I have a uh, phobe fact. Oh, phobe facts. I want to hear some phobe facts. When Tim and Jerry are walking around and they find an object on the ground, it's like, it's the phobe grenade, right? Because oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Jerry, it, like, it explodes. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, in the movie... When Jerry picks up the item and is talking to Tim about it, he's actually holding a tomato because the actual <laughs> prop was run over by accident. Oh my so god. He just had to hold on to a tomato. They 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 couldn't go a dollar over that two fifty to get it to build another prop. <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> nope. <laughs> one th one thing I did like about the later on though is they they sh they showed Sergeant Dapp's lightsaber. He pulls it out for no reason. Oh. I think it's only to show that he's got it. And then they have a mm -hmm. full-on lightsaber battle later. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. And if I may point out, it's purple. Way before Mace Windu's was purple. Well, way before. Yeah, way before. Although I found it amusing if you've got access to lightsaber technology when you're fighting in a steel plant at the end of the uh, at the end of your movie. Yeah, they picked up some like, like rebar, and started fighting oh, with yeah. rebar. Like, ah, I, I, I kind of would, would rather stick with my lightsaber, to be honest. But hey, <laughs> you know who are we to question the techniques and methods of Sergeant Dapp? Ah, uh, yeah, well, he got the job done, didn't he? By God, you can't argue with his methods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and like, I, I, I thought one of the best scenes was when uh, Dap is talking to the, our heroine, Jennifer, and her buddy Rob, and they're at Rob's house, oh, yeah. and this is just pretty much where he explains what the phobes are, like how they're built to be, ex, you know, ultimate killers, and then they exiled them and forgot about them, and still they started, like, coming back and killing Whoops. people. And just, well, you know, I just found myself saying, like, this is one of the best scenes because people are just stumbling <laughs> over their lines right and left. Oh, God, <laughs> and like, no. everyone's just sitting at the table and he's just exposition just coming out of his mouth. <laughs> like, I don't know what it was, but I just really like that. that. And that's the scene, I think, where he shows his yellow eyes. <laughs> There's no point. No point. They, I guess they got some sponsorship from some uh, op optometrist or something. And, hey, <laughs> let's get some yellow contacts in. Let's go for it. Erin was watching this with me, and she said that she thought it would be funny if there was a sex scene between Dap and Jennifer where it's just <laughs> all dark and you just see his glowing eyes moving. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to revisit something about uh, I said a moment ago about arguing with uh, Sergeant Dapp's methods. You kind of can't argue with them because the end of the movie he just throws out this trap and the phobe like Ghostbuster style and the phobe just kind of gets sucked into it. Yeah, what does it do? I'm pretty sure he could have used that about 50 times earlier in the movie. Because then, of course, you know, you've got the double cross where the people that hired Dapp are like gonna use the phobe for a weapon and you know i'm pretty sure daff wanted it killed uh, you could see it coming a mile away but it was still yeah. an enjoyable twist at the end i think where you know the, like daff and and the phobe had to <laughs> reach a common <laughs> agreement or know. you know well, I, I love that that jennifer once so they the big evil businessman who i would guess they're all the same no matter which planet you're on he shoots daff and Jennifer's like, well, I guess the phobe's my only hope now. Yeah. <laughs> so much conviction behind the delivery of those lines. And she's like, all right, well, I guess I better let the phobe out. And uh, the phobe just kind of <laughs> kicks some ass. And oh, the phobe. <laughs> and, oh. Then, and then Dap wakes up like, well, all right, guess we're buddies now. You can have the ship. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stay on Yeah, the he ship. gives him the ship and the phobe takes off to parts unknown. Who knows? And the phobe's going to... Now, it, it's, does he stay with her? Are they an item at the end of the movie? Well, I couldn't quite tell. I mean, she, she does look like... I mean, she's supposed to be a senior in high school. She still lives yeah. with her parents, but she kind of looks like she's been held back a few years. 
And <laughs> I, I, I guess that she and Dap can make a start on things. I mean, she'd have to drop out of high school at the age of yeah. 30. And uh, live happily ever after, I guess. I guess. Can we talk about the phobe a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about the phobe. I mean, they're all over the place around here where we're sitting, so, <laughs> you know, we see them everywhere. Let's talk about them. They're just kind of like guys in a kind of crappy ghillie suits with a white paper mache mask that I thought looked pretty good considering the budget. Well, you also are a big fan of Doctor Who, and when I saw it, that was one of my early thoughts. Was I'm like, this looks like a thing from like old school Doctor Who. It, it kind of had that feel, yes. where you can see the person's eyes in the mask. Oh God, <laughs> you can yes. see the human's eyes. I can say they did not look threatening at all. Well, the ones in here look a little more threatening than the one they got for the movie. We, since we don't know what the other guys are talking about, like we should probably just, you know, do rating time. I guess rating mm. time. And that still oh. sounds like shit. Oh, that's oh, oh that's just it. terrible. Uh, well, all right. Well, all right. Uh, well rating time. I don't even know what they're rating it on. So, do we have our own rating? Well, I was gonna say, if, if you read the credits, there's a special shout out to some, I guess, some Chinese restaurant that they wanted to give a special thanks to the uh, for the chicken balls. <laughs> oh, we gotta do that. So we can rate it in chicken <laughs> That's <ridiculous>. balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we'll rate it in chicken balls. All right. So, oh, yeah. well, what are you gonna give this? Uh, one to a hundred chicken well, chicken balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they, they, you can tell this is just every, every group, I think, every group of creative people wants to get together and give a shot at making a movie. And that's exactly what this felt like and looked like. And yeah, they don't have the technical ability, the acting ability, or the budget to really pull it off. But it's that all comes across on the screen and that it's like, oh, yeah, I remember doing a million things like this when we were younger. And uh, mm-hmm. ah, yeah, we've got one on Amazon Prime now, if anyone cares to hear about it or talk about it later. But um, at the same time, that script needed a couple more passes. I think they should have spent a little okay. bit more time on that. And way less padding. Oh, my God. So many shots, like we said, so many shots of people walking, so many shots of feet. Just dr- cut it. I mean, you could cut half the movie. Cut all that shit out, and you've got a movie <laughs> half the length. So... Yeah. I don't know what to say. So it really dragged for me at a lot of points. So I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it 45 chicken balls. 45 chicken 45 balls? 45 chicken okay. balls. Okay. All right. Um, I think I had a little bit more of a positive reaction to it. Um, yes, there are definitely moments that drag. And I found myself just writing my notes and then I would just look up when the next thing happened because there was so much time. Yeah. Um, I would be curious to see a shorter cut where even if it was oh, yeah. even if it was half the length, like what it would look like if it really moved. I think that'd be interesting. I think it'd be. Um, it would, I think it'd be a really fun movie that way. Yeah. Um, and speaking of of really fun, I don't think I'm alone in in saying that I would be 100 percent down for Phobe Two. Oh yeah. Um, oh, if yeah. they ever did that. And I, yeah. I would just like to appeal to the filmmakers that, you know, if you got a million dollars to do it somehow, just please leave the characters and the phobe looking the same. Make everything else look good. <laughs> oh, and it yeah. would be just such a weird mix. It would be so <laughs> cool. So I would, I, especially if you could get Dap back and maybe get that mullet, that would be outstanding. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I did enjoy this. Um, I did think there was, I, I enjoyed reading about the people who made it and just their sort of surprise at, at what this has become. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna give it 71 chicken balls. 71, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I, I had a pretty good time with it. It's, it's, it's just enjoyable for what it is. Well, I guess that's it for us. Um, you know, before we go though, I, I, they're not, you know, Paul and Mike aren't gonna know what's supposed to be playing next time. You know, oh. so right. um, well, it's your pick, right? I yeah. Can, yeah, it's my pick. So mm-hmm. I can tell you, and then you know maybe we hopefully the signal will get to them. Yeah, for well. by the next episode. The next episode of B-Movie Mania. Oh God, that's just oh, that sounds horrible. <sighs> just, none of the f- effects are working. Okay, let us let me just do this. Let me just do this. My pick for next time checks off a box that, that we have not yet checked off oh, on boy. B-Movie Mania. I'm picking a musical. 
Oh, wow. It is a musical found on Amazon Prime. It is called Psycho Betty's from Planet Pussycat. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, oh, my God. That sounds wonderful. This quick summary. 20 years ago, a virus killed off all the males on Planet Pussycat. Oh, yeah. Faced with inevitable extinction, Queen Betty of Pussycat hatched a plan to save her loyal subjects, the remaining population known as Bettys. After receiving Earth's television signals, four chosen Bettys traveled to Earth in search of men for procreation or dismemberment. Oh, right. So, <laughs> it's just a roll of the dice at this point. <laughs> Which one are you going to get? Yep. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of songs in this. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's All right. a no-budget musical. A no-budget sci-fi musical. I am, I am totally down for this. If only just yeah. to figure out what kind of person names their planet Pussycat. I guess we'll find out. All right, well, let's. Uh, I'm going to take another slurp out of this crack in the wall yep. here, and uh, let's see if we can figure out a way out of here. Oh, oh, you know what? Those phobes, they just, they just opened the door for us. So, uh, oh. everybody out.